Hi everyone and welcome to Paint with Plaid. If you're new to Paint with Plaid, if this is your first time joining us, we're super excited to have you mm -hmm. with us. Paint with Plaid is our series of Facebook live streams where we show you how to paint a beautiful painting in just about an hour. So if you're not following us yet, please, sure, please be sure to do so on Facebook where Plaid Crafts. Tonight we are super excited. This has literally been like a fan favorite painting, Suzanne. So yes, oh good. We're really, Yay. really excited about uh -huh. this one. So we hope you have your supplies for our summer memories paint night. If you're painting with friends, we hope you have your pals, your supplies, mm -hmm. and maybe a favorite beverage or snack as well. Yeah. Or you might just be painting solo, just having some alone time for a creative night in. So we're really excited. Tonight's painting is featuring folk art, acrylic paint, as well as Mod this, Podge. Yeah, this is new. This is yeah. a new thing, so mm -hmm. it's very exciting. I mean, Mod Podge isn't new, but no, it's new but on using the paint. On the paint night. So yeah. it's really exciting, Suzanne, yeah. because Suzanne has chosen to show us a really fun method how to use your Mod Podge along with sand and shells from the beach. Yes. If you've been to the beach yet. If you haven't been to the beach just yet, don't worry. You can always replay this live stream after the live broadcast is over. So it's super fun to actually attach your sand and shells to your mm -hmm. paintings. Yes, exactly. Super, super fun. Also, I want you to know that we would love to see your paintings. If you use our hashtag paint with plaid, again, it's hashtag paint with plaid to share on social with us, or you can just simply post on our Facebook page as well. If you're watching live, we would love for you to share this video with someone else that you might think mm -hmm. enjoy painting along with us. So go ahead and share down below. We would love that. Mm -hmm. And without further ado, let's get this party started. All right, let's, this, let's go. All let's right. Let's get along. Oh. Okay. Oh, let me get situated here. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm not quite sure. Are we, I guess we're just going just right into it. Okay. We have some, I have some friends here from Plaid that are going to be painting with me along with you. So there you go. So today we're going to be painting, of course, the beach scene, which I have propped up here on an easel so that we can refer to it whenever, uh, just for everybody can see what's going on and we'll be able to refer to it occasionally. So the, we're just gonna get right into it. The first thing you're going to need is some stencil tape. So everybody has, some, hopefully you have stencil tape. If you don't have stencil tape, you can just use uh, masking tape. But stencil tape, the reason it's really um, useful is that it's low tack. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and how I like to do it is, um, give enough tape so you can do the sides too. So you're going to come up at the top and you're going to just kind of eyeball it down about four tapes down. Four to five. And hopefully I'm sitting down so hopefully I can get it straight. Okay, and then you're going to press it down. And because it's low tack, it'll protect the paint but we'll be able to take it back up. Okay. So that, this is going to be our horizon right here. This is our horizon line. So we're going to be painting above, for the, uh, above the tape. And the reason we want to do the tape is because unlike um, the last uh, episode that we did with um, Paint with Plaid was a lake and we had an irregular um, horizon line. This one, because it's the ocean, we want a really straight horizon line. So we're going to start by taking your white, titanium white. Oh, you know what? Before we go, let me just re review all the paints that we're gonna use besides just the one we're using now. We're gonna have titanium white, okay? And then we're also going to have ocean view. And we're also going to have parchment. And we're also going to have aqua. And we're also going to have Calypso Sky. I love the names of the folk art paint. Calypso Sky and Ocean View are perfect for this painting. And if you're missing the supply list, you can mm -hmm. find it in the link in the uh, video as well. Right. And so we're also going to be using Mod Podge Gloss. Real important that we use gloss. It's the strongest sealer of the Mod Podge for what we're going to be doing by attaching the sand and the shells. And we'll have some beach sand. Um, and I have some shells over here too that were left from when uh, I just recently went to the beach, so I collected some shells to bring. The brushes that we're going to be using, we're using this um, particular pack has one and a half inch uh, flat brushes, and they come two in a pack, and we will be using both. If you, if you don't have uh, two brushes, you can use just one. 
um, and just wash it. But it's nice to have two and to keep going. And then we're also um, having the Folk Art Brushes a 10-piece pack. And these are the ones that we're particularly going to be using. We're going to be using um, the 3 fourths Flat. This is a little scruffy brush. We're going to use that to do some of the um, spray and some of the clouds. We're doing a 3 fourths scruffy brush, which is kind of, see, it's kind of fluffy on the top. And then we have a two-liner uh, and a one-liner and then also another little flat, a 12 flat. So if you don't have the 10 piece, I would recommend getting it because it's a great um, set to have a lot of different varieties. I'm not even using all of them for this painting, but once you purchase it once, you can use it many times. Um, so we're gonna get started. Now that we've kind of reviewed everything, we put our stencil tape down. So now we're going to start with some titanium white and I would just put that on your palette and I would give a generous amount. I would say put about um, like a 50 cents piece worth. Um, and then go ahead and also put down some ocean view beside that. And for the ocean view, I would put just like a, it looks like the size of a quarter. And for those that are scrambling to maybe find their supplies, would you, okay. that's the lightest? Which is the lightest blue, because we have three blues. Yes, yes. This, the ocean view is like for the sky. So the other two are going to be, well, actually all of them, they're just some, they look really pretty together for the water. Okay, so now um, we're going to start with a, one of our large brushes. And if it's brand new, um, like right out of the pack, like this one's brand new, they use sizing to keep the bristles in place at the very beginning, so through shipping and packaging. So what you wanna do is rinse it in some water just gently, just to get the, the sizing out. Okay, and then I'm just gonna dry it just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to load our brush with the white and to load your brush, again, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you make little cross X's back and forth and just go back and forth in your paint and you don't want your brush to be loaded with really thick with paint. You just want a nice amount for you to be able to control because we're going to again let me move my paints up we want to be able to complete this in an hour so we don't want to saturate our canvas with a lot of paint okay so now we're going to start at the top and if you're left-handed you can start on the right side but if you're right-handed you can start on the left side and it's okay to go over the tape that's what we have it for so we're just going to paint in long strokes. You want to just get the whole top covered in white. And you also can do a little bit on the sides. You want to go ahead and do that. Okay, just in long strokes. Just make sure it gets. Now if you're scrubbing, that means you just need to add a little bit more paint. So you want it to flow really nicely. Now, without washing our brush, we're going to tap into our ocean view. And again, I'm just, let me show you, I'm just doing just the tip. See, like this. So now we're going to start at the top and we're going to drag from the top across. Okay, and then you have to reload some paint. So what we're trying to do is make it more uh, more concentrated blue at the top and then it'll fade down into a lighter blue. So we just go back and forth with long strokes and you can reload your brush as you need to. Oh, and we have a question from oh, Lucy, okay. Suzanne, uh -huh. if you primed the canvas. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, that's another thing. It's 11 by 14 canvas and this is a stretched prime canvas. I, um, it's already primed, so it's, it's ready to go. So yes, last, uh, the, the Serene Lake, we used um, a canvas board, but this one is a stretched canvas, primed already. Okay. So now, after we've gone back and forth, and we just make a really pretty sky blue, and it's okay if it's like a little bit dark in some areas. You don't have to have it look like it's been airbrushed or anything. Okay. So now, we're going to rinse our brush because we're just not going to leave it with paint on it. We're going to rinse it and set it aside because we're now we're going to take our other large brush. Okay. It's great because it's the two pack of 
right. brushes great for base coating right? right and these are great base coating brushes they're just fun to work with they're really smooth and they work really well with the folk art the creaminess of the paint okay again now this one doesn't have quite as much sizing but I still am going to rinse it just a little bit okay now we're going to start now with the sand we've done the sky and we're going to go to the sand and this is just a color that we're putting we're not doing the Mod Podge yet we're just going to paint with the parchment so for those of you that don't have uh, sand and some shells and you just want to um, um, use just the paint you can do that too and so you need to put like a quarter's worth of squeeze out a quarter's worth of the parchment or even uh, if you didn't have sand and, and shells now you could even mm -hmm. add that right you could because we're the paintings draw right because we're putting down um, the parchment um, to have an undercoating for our sand okay so again to load your brush you're just going to go back and forth making little X's um, on the parchment <laughs> and then we're going to go across the bottom of your canvas okay and then you're just all you're going to do we're not creating any kind of shapes or anything like that all we're doing is just making sure we get it coated I would even do the edge um, we're working on a on a drop cloth right now so it makes it really nice because you can just go down get the edge and not worry about getting paint on the table so that's a good thing to do just get you a you know a, a canvas drop cloth because now ours has a lot of character it has so much paint on it and okay so now now that I've got the areas covered down here I'm just going to clean my brush off by just going up really quickly back and forth okay okay and is there a certain point Suzanne where you want to yeah I would say a little bit halfway this is just where the sand might show the rest of it's going to be all blue so I would say maybe midway okay so now we have our sand down and now we have our sky so now let's rinse this brush out and again we just want to rinse it because we don't want to leave it in the water for too long and dry it off and now comes a fun part this is why we use um, stencil tape because we're going to um, get to pull off the stencil tape now it's the big reveal yeah it is exciting <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're going to take um well if i can get it i put mine on really good on the back there we go so you just pull it off there okay and see what a crisp line you get it's, it is beautiful it's a nice crisp line hang on i touched mine just now with my thumb so i'm gonna <laughs> That was nice. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start with the top part um, of the ocean. And I, can I show this? Yeah, yeah, okay, let me should. show this under here. Okay, so we're gonna st going to start here with the horizon line. We're going to start with the aqua. So just so you can see it. Okay. So now you're going to squeeze out some aqua. And again, I would put, uh, you know, like a, a generous quarter size amount. And I meant like the size of a round quarter. And I think you mm -hmm. can see quite on the... Oh, you can't? There. Okay. Is yeah. that good? Can you see it? Do you mean turn my palette around? Yeah, maybe we can... Maybe this way? Yeah. Just Is that better? If people want to see how you're loading your, okay. your brush. All right. Okay. And again, that was the aqua, so kind of the darkest blue. Yes, the darkest blue. Of the palette. Okay, so now you're going to take one of your, your the first brush that you cleaned, your, one, your large brush again. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to, instead of do, you can do the X to load it, but now I'm going to show you, take your brush and you're gonna wiggle it like this after you've loaded it. And we're flattening out the top. So we're just wiggling it back and forth just to have a really sharp edge to our brush because now we have to go to the um, horizon line. So we're going to start on the uh, left-hand side and we're gonna push our paint up just a little bit and then we're just going to, going to, and you can go slow, just pull your paintbrush sideways, following the line, okay? 
So you can, you can do it in more than, you know, don't try to do it all in one stroke if you don't feel comfortable. You can stop and start again. Okay. And then once you've gone off the side, let me move this just a little bit so I can get the side down here. Okay. Make sure so that you keep this line really crisp. I would pull the aqua down just a little bit. And it's, it's a great, it's such a nice, it's a very summery color. Really pretty. Especially for the oceans that are this aqua color. And you got that line really crisp. That's, well, that's a and you great know, technique. Yeah, and it helps with the, um, the stencil tape. It just really helps. So now we can, now that I've got this, I'm going to turn my brush sideways now and I'm going to use it from a flat direction. And I'm just going to almost like clean off my brush now. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to do it in some areas. I'm not going to do it all over. I'm going to turn it to the side of my brush like this. And I'm going to use it just, I'm not going to go too far down in my sand yet though. Just a little bit. Okay. Is everybody? And so you're just cleaning off your brush. Don't add more paint yet. Okay. So you want it to be kind of the faded. It's a little effect. bit. This is like a dry brush effect because it'll help it fade for you. Okay. So while everyone's completing that, we would mm -hmm. actually, especially in the spirit of our beach uh -huh. paint party night, we would love to hear what your favorite beach is in the comments. We actually, the most recent beach I went to was in St. Simons, Georgia with we took our kids Ella and Leo to the beach there. So let us know your favorite beach. I know when on the event listing, a lot of people were posting their favorite beaches and let us know what beach really inspires you and where you're going this summer or if you haven't gone yet while you're painting your fun beach scene here. Yeah. Okay. So the next color we have is Calypso Sky. So I've just set my paintbrush down just for a minute so that I can get some Calypso Sky. This is kind of the mid-range blue. Mid-range blue, right. And so now I'm just going to, I'm not going to clean my paintbrush, just going to use some of the, the um, Calypso Sky and I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of Ooh. the aqua. So I made like another mid-range in there. So we just have a variety of colors. So now this one, I'm just going to paint again kind of with some little swoops, kind of like water shapes where you, and then again, I want to make sure I have paint on my paintbrush. If you're scrubbing, then you, you don't have, um, you, you need to get enough paint. Okay, so, so I'm just making little water, and I'm pulling my brush sideways, so I'm pressing down and releasing pressing down and releasing and that gives these water these water shapes to it it's not a lot of work the brush does most of the work for you so again I'm just pressing down on the edge and then coming up pressing down and coming up we had a while you're painting and everyone's uh, finishing that portion it had a great suggestion from someone uh -huh. out there I'm sorry I missed your name but to tape down freezer paper underneath to mm -hmm. prevent any paint on your table or anything like that. Oh, that's like a that. great idea. Great idea. Yeah. And then loving all the beaches that y'all are mentioning to us. We have everyone from beaches from Oregon to Florida. Myrtle Beach seems to be a hit. So mm -hmm. it's super fun. Let us know okay. your favorite beaches out there. Okay. So now we're going to use Calypso Sky without mixed, you know, it's not mixed with the aqua. Just keep the same paintbrush. Just again, load a little bit of the Calypso Sky. And again, we're going to, and now we're going to go a little bit lower. And we're just, again, just pressing and dragging sideways with our paintbrush. Okay. And then if you have any little white areas, you can just, this is a lot lighter, so you can see it's a lighter. Okay. All right. And then we're going to bring it down just a little bit. And we're not going to cover up all the sand right here. So now we're going to do a very light, irregular beach shape. All I did was now my 
paintbrush I've been using it for a while it's a little dry so I just on its edge did an irregular shape so this is going to be sand this is where the water is getting lighter okay okay now without paint um, washing your brush again we're going to pick up some white and just do a little bit of X again not a lot of paint and again we're going to it should be kind of like a really pale blue and, and Suzanne you actually just got back from the beach Annabelle yes. says hello by yes, the way. Uh, yes, yes, I was What's at your favorite beach? I'm, my favorite beach is Star Island. It's off the coast of New Hampshire. It's part of the Isles of Shoals. Um, it's a family retreat um, island and uh, we oh, it's beautiful. Off the coast of New Hampshire in Maine. Oh, and Marina literally just went to Costa Rica and brought sand home to use on this project. Oh, wow. How exciting. Great. Okay. Well, this will be a great memory. And this will this uh, this water actually is very Caribbean looking. So now you can do the sides to just tap it. Now, see, I have a little bit. If you can see in here, I have places that you can still see the sand through. Okay. Now before, um, let's see. We've got most of the light now. Let's go and um, do a little bit of work with a smaller brush. So once y'all get to this point. Let's rinse this brush out, and we're going to get, they're having a really good time here. Yeah, we hope you're having a good time. <laughs> at your it's paint like party. we're at the beach. Uh -huh. Yes, and actually, speaking of, there's a few of our friends painting that are at the beach right now painting along, and mm -hmm. if, you, if you happen to not have your supplies while you're watching us live, don't worry, you can replay this broadcast, uh, our live broadcast on demand later. So mm -hmm. I love the idea of painting along while you're actually on a beach trip. We have several friends with us painting tonight that are literally on the beach. We're not. Oh. We're not yeah. at the beach right now, but no. it would be yeah. great. I wish we, I tried <laughs> to get Plaid right? to send us to Florida <laughs> to paint and they didn't like that idea. So, okay, so now we're going to go back and we're going to use a little bit of our ocean view that we used for the sky. So we're gonna use a little bit of it. I think I need to put a little bit more on my palette over to the side. Okay, so now the brush that we're going to use for this is a 12 flat. So it's a flat brush, and it, but it's the 12 flat. And the one thing about the flat brush is it does, um, it gives you some nice sharp lines by just going back and forth, uh, but also when you press down it can make it a little bit wider. I find it okay. fairly easy to uh, control. Okay, so just in here we're going to, I just like this aqua color, this uh, ocean view just has a really pretty mint color to it. So all I'm doing is just doing just some little water stripes. And again, you just make little water, you know, shapes. They're just little highlights. And speaking of that gorgeous color, mm -hmm. Suzanne, Juanita actually has a question. If she wanted to paint her water with a darker color, like a more of a greenish uh -huh. color, I don't know if mm -hmm. you know a specific folk art now because we literally have hundreds of colors in folk art. Um, in a dark green, is that in what a she was saying? greenish tone. In a greenish yeah. tone. Um, oh, I know a clover is a nice green, but I'm not sure, um, uh, like for like a deep emerald, we also have Ooh. an emerald that's pretty. I mean, so. That's right. Yeah. If you go to our website, platonline.com, you can actually view our entire catalog of folk art paints. It comes in a great range of colors. We have several specialty formulas as well. Okay, so now, after we have this done, we're going to go back. This is just a lot of mixing and adding dark, co dark colors. So now we're going to use the aqua, which is our darkest, and we're going to do some water ways in here. So I'm just going to go kind of almost like wiggling back and forth. Now, wherever we want the wave to be, like a rolling wave, which I'm gonna do it about right here, I'm gonna make it dark, because it'll be the shadow under the, under the spray. So I'm putting it under a light right there. So there was a light um, where I had some of the ocean view and I can do it again up here. I'm going to do another one that's kind of dark. 
and again I'm just using it on the side pressing down and then releasing so it gives the illusion of the wave shape and then I'm going to do a little one out here too that's looking great, Suzanne. I love it. Lucy says, there's pink sand in Bermuda. I haven't been to Ooh, Bermuda, but that sounds Oh, that would lovely. be beautiful, <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. That would be beautiful on here, just adding a little bit of pink, too. Yeah. Okay. So, now we've got a, a lot of our waves going on. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I see right in here I don't want to let this go. And if you want to just use a little bit of paint, you can use a little bit of paint and a little bit of water at the same time. I wouldn't water it down too much because you want it to stick. You don't want it to get to where it won't, but um, you can just blend with a little bit of water too, just to, I mean, it's so funny, fun doing oceans because, you know, they're constantly moving and there's really, there's no way to really mess this up. It's just your interpretation of what the water ocean water looks like oh, okay question from Beth just to remind okay. everyone what brush are you using there right using now it? I'm using the 12 flat okay so now we're gonna get to do the fun stuff which is we're going to work start to work on our spray on the waves so now you're going to want to get let me see which brush you're we're going to start with our one liner okay and make sure you have enough white. Um, let me move my palette. Let's see. Let me move my palette around one more time, so you can see what I'm doing. This is the the smallest one in the artist variety. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding a little bit of water because my white's been out there for a little bit of time. So I want it creamy. I don't want it thin. I just want it to be able to flow easily. But I've flipped. Okay, okay. So, um, you spin your brush, and in spinning your brush, that makes you have a little point on the end. So, wherever we're going to have a little wave, like on top of the dark that we just did, now you're going to kiss the canvas with your paintbrush. And the other thing, I find it's easier to control, to give yourself a little bit irregular so it's not so perfect, is to hold your brush kind of in the middle, like this. Don't hold it way up here. Let it come. So this will give you a little bit more flow and, e and freedom with your brush. So you can just tap really, like I'm doing it really lightly, and then down and doing a few little waves and out like that. So again, you don't want you don't want to put a lot of pressure. So another one over here, I think I'll have a wave right here. And again, I'm barely kissing the canvas. And here I think I'm going to have a a wave come down. So it's kind of rolling down, so I'm going to come down, tap, it'll go back up, it'll come back down. And then back up. Okay. Okay. And then on this one, you can really see the shadow also. So we're going to again, really back back up on my paintbrush. See, even I sometimes have a tendency to go down, but if I back up on the paintbrush and lightly, it just gives it a lot more fluidness. Okay, I'm going to come down, go back up, come back down. Okay, and then we're going to do another one over here. So you can really, and you can decide, you could do like really big waves if you wanted to. It's up to you. If you, you can use the same technique to do larger waves or smaller waves. Okay, and I'm going to do a bunch of just some little ones right in here. And again, not continuous lines, you know, just little water shapes, some thick, some thin. And to get that, you just press on the brush a little bit and then not. Okay. So now we're going to, um, oh wait, I see one more I need to do right here. I'm going to do one right here. I'm just going to come up. 
So I'm going to come roll over. Okay. Now, now we're going to go to our scruffy brush, which is really fun to use. Ooh, the scruffies are very fun. Yes, and this was fun because we're going to use the little scruffy brush. Because this, the variety pack actually comes with two. And right, a larger one. So this is the top. smaller one to do some of the smaller waves in the back. And this is what we're going to do, going to do the, the uh, spray with. So you take um, your scruffy and you just kind of pounce it into the paint. Okay, and then if you... You can also offload a little bit on your pa on your paper towel just so it doesn't get too wet. Okay. And then I would suggest let's just start over here really little. I mean on the, one of the little waves. And all you're going to do is just tap it onto your paper onto your painting. So this is creating the spray. And you can do some that have like, you know, like come up, you can And this is really neat because it just makes little spray marks and you can see there I made a little bit thicker you can even use like the edge of the brush to get keep along the line and say I want to say like the wind caught some of the spray and brushed it up okay so now just do the same thing I'm just gonna go back and get a little bit more paint and again over here just tap, tap, tap. So the brush, again, this is a great brush because it does a lot of the work for you. You're not having to do all these little individual. You just kind of, and this one, this wave, I'm just going to have it crash over. See how it, down. And I can, you can use, like I said, the side of the brush and crash it down again. That's looking beautiful, Suzanne. Some good sized waves going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you could do some really big ones and maybe put a surfer on it. <laughs> yeah, a boogie board. And so if you want to kind of brush up a little bit after you on some of your paint, see it kind of looks like the waves or the wind has caught the wave of the spray. Okay, so now. This one is going to be a little bit bigger. So again, I just tap, let it fade out, and then bring it in. And then add a lot more right down here because this is kind of a big wave that's crashing down. And that way, the dark underneath here, see, creates the shadow. And again. That's looking great, Suzanne. And if you're just now joining us, we are live with Paint with Plaid. It's our series of Facebook live streams where you learn how to paint a beautiful painting in about an hour. It's mm -hmm. a fun night, just just hanging out solo, having a creative night in, or oh, or sorry, having a creative night in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, She's like Suzanne <laughs> Kate, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Then having I'm a cre creative <laughs> night in with yourself or getting friends and families together. We ac are actually painting Summer Memories, which is an extra special one because Suzanne is going to show us at the end of this painting how to actually attach real sand from your own summer memory as well as shells to your painting with Mod Podge. It's a really, really fun one. And don't worry, if you don't have supplies mm -hmm. with you right now, you can replay this video on demand on our Facebook page and we actually also upload them to YouTube as well. So. We're excited to have you joining us. That's looking so good, Suzanne. Okay. All right, I'm going to do one more. And then we're going to go to our large scruffy brush. And, and that's what we'll do close to the sand. Now, while you still have your little one, your little brush, you can just do a few more little areas right in here where it's hitting, coming close to the sand, where we did some of our little white. And you can just pounce. See, it makes like little dots, like it's little spray. I'm just, it's making some irregular little shapes, but that's okay, because that's, you know, when the ocean comes in, it's all um, bubbly and lots of little sprays. And oh, and okay. Stephanie loves Top Cell Beach in North Carolina. I've not heard of I that. I have not gone there. I've heard of it, but I've never visited there. Okay, so I think that's enough for right now. And you can always go back on any of this. 
you know, and use and do more or less. You can just look at it for a little while. So now we're going to get our large scruffy brush. And this one's fun because this is what we're going to do the bottom here. So we want to keep, you know, enough for our sand. So we don't want to paint all the way down, but we want to blend the, the blue into the sand so with, the, with the spray. So again, we're going to tap onto our paintbrush. And then we can offload, this is called offloading, onto a paper towel. And then you can just lightly, I mean lightly, just hit the surface and give it some variety because you want, you know, the sea foam to, it can go up. Okay. And you can do some swirls if you want. Where it is. Let's do this side. It can get kind of thin in one area and then thicker and this is really fun this you really it's, it's not a it, it has such a good effect you know it's, and it's very easy to do okay so now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit more paint just to give it some texture and some depth now that I've got and a little bit more solid white in some areas not everywhere, just in some areas. And it makes it really thick and it has like a little bit of a texture to it. Um, the folk art uh, titanium white has some good body to it. And that way you can really see it. Okay. And now I can go back and again, like I said, just maybe drag my brush just a little bit just to make some other areas. that are white. Okay. And now I'm going to get my my one liner one more time. And I'm going to do a little bit of white, but I'm not going to do but just a tiny 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 bit. And some areas that are just blue, just to make it look like the sun is sparkling on it on the water. Okay, so say like up here in your close to your horizon line, it'll look like the the sun is just glistening off the water, so it's not just solid blue. And like right in here, do that too. Okay. Now you can go back and add little dots for spray, which we've already got a lot of that. But if you have a particular place that you would like to do some wind you know, spray with some little dots, you can do that. And Suzanne, mm -hmm. we have a question from uh -huh. Kathy, and I feel like this is maybe more of an artistic interpretation type of question, but mm -hmm. how, she wants to know, how can you tell when enough is enough I, is, with the waves? You can go slowly and, and um, look back. I would step back from your painting, maybe even put it up and look at it. And see, like for me right now, looking at this from here, this is really, really dark and I'd like a little bit of interest but all of this looks pretty good I've got a lot going on so I'm going to use my paintbrush just to do again a little bit I'd add a little bit before I'd add a lot I just do a little at a time you know so that way just a, a little bit makes a big difference when you're painting water and then maybe right here, because it looks like, and maybe I can even do like the traditional wave, you know, kind of shape where you have like the little point. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we're going to use uh, our big scruffy to do some clouds. Now, I would dry it off. I, I think if you put it in your water, just dry it. It, it doesn't, we're going to use it in white again. So you don't have to have it completely clean because we've used white. Okay. 
So you're going to take your, um, and let me get a little bit more titanium white, okay? And we're going to tap into our paint, and this I am going to definitely offload a little bit because I don't want to use a lot of paint. I want to be able to go a little bit at a time. Again, this is good to go a little bit at a time. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to make C's, okay? Almost like a backward C though, because we're going to make it windy. So if you go like this, like if the wind is coming up, and then you can do uh, like a regular C, and you just kiss the, um, the um, horizon line. You don't really want to get it on the horizon line. And I don't think our friends out there can see, but you offloaded your brush a good amount. Yes, I did offload. Let me just show you. Yes. So what I did was, let me just show you. I, paint, I got a lot of paint on my paintbrush, and then I just dabbed it on here just to offload it so that, you know, it's on there. But that way, this is, is really good for the scruffy. So when, you, when I go, and the other thing is you can even kind of make some round, you know, like circular. You want to make like a big cloud? And actually, could we get a closer look at the, the clouds just to give everyone an idea of how much she offloaded her brush and how that scruffy brush really helps her create those clouds, just to get a little closer peek at those. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. And if you get a little bit of hair from your brush, you can just leave it because when it dries, it'll wipe right off your canvas. Okay, so here I'm getting some paint on my paintbrush. I'm taking it over here. I'm going to offload it. And I'm just turning it as I offload it. And then when I hit the canvas, see it's like almost like a dry brush effect. So that way I'm controlling it a lot better than, and it makes fluffy clouds instead of having it, you know, really thick. Okay. And Suzanne, what would mm -hmm. you do if a bristle happened to pop out of your brush? Well, if it did, like there's one right there, I would just leave it. And then when it dries, you just rub your finger on it and it'll come right off. So I wouldn't worry about it. And this, the scruffy brush makes it so easy to make these clouds. Right. And it helps you loosen it up so that you're not trying to do really, you know, tight uh, clouds. So it's, it's a real wispy day on the beach. The wind's really moving. So windy. Okay. All right. So now we are ready, I think. How's everybody doing? Yeah, oh, there's some good. rough seas, some calm <laughs> seas. <laughs> some, yeah. Okay, so now we're ready to use our Mod Podge, I think. So let's just make sure you um, rinse your brushes and put those out to the side. And now I'm going to move my palette to the side and then I'm going to go back and so, I, so you guys can see the Mod Podge part. Okay, so um, I have in a paper bowl some beach sand and I would say it's about um, three, uh, maybe two tablespoons worth. So when you put your beach sand in, you're going to need the same amount of Mod Podge as sand ratio. So of course this is a little bit of guessing. There's no exact way of doing it or wrong way of doing it. So I want to put a little bit of the same on the side. Okay. And then I'm just going to use one of our big paintbrush. Oh yeah, uh, one of our big paintbrushes. I'll just use the end of it to mix it. So it's pretty fun to mix. Just put the Now Mod Podge is white and when you mix it, it looks it's going to look milky, but when it dries, it'll dry super clear. It won't even look like you put anything on it. It'll be shiny. But see, this is kind of, and so it looks a little bit like cream of wheat, um, like a paste almost. You don't want it, if it's too thick, um, you need to add more Mod Podge. If it's too runny, you need to add more sand. So if you can see right here, this is probably the right consistency. You know, it, 
it drips a little bit. While everyone's stirring, just in case you're new to Mod Podge, it is a glue sealer and finish all in one. And this is just one of many, many things you can do with Mod Podge. We have a great series of uh, videos and also on our Facebook where you can learn even more things to do with Mod Podge. Oh, Again, yes. this is just one of our mm -hmm. many formulas. Suzanne, we have some other fun projects out there too. Yes, and it, it it's very, um, versatile there's lots you can do with it and this is probably maybe be something that you haven't seen before so this um now we're going to use our three-fourths inch flat brush and also have ready some of your shells that you have and these are going to be ready to put into the sand so what we're going to do is just scoop the sand up on our brush and paint it on now Again, you just might want to just pat it because you don't want all your brush strokes to show because it'll hold your brush strokes. So you just want to scoop it on and try not to get it, you know, mixed into your paint. But just, I would just come up just pretty close to your spray. Now, if you don't want to do sand, if you don't have any sand tonight, um, to, or today, I should say, whenever you're doing the video, you know, practicing this video. Um, you can always wait and add it later if you want. Or if you like the look without sand, you can go sandless too. Yes, it absolutely. Uh -huh. as, it is. as it is, right. Okay. So I'm just like you said, I'm like you see, I'm just scooping it up on there. And it's okay if it's thick. I mean it kind of gives it a lot more realistic look to it because we're also going to be putting the shells in it, so we want to make sure okay, that we have enough for it to, for the shell to kind of bury down in there like it's in on the beach and not just sitting on top. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more, go from this side. And this also would create a great texture. Children like, uh, this because this texture is a very sensorial type of texture. Um, we do have um, one video on our fun with Mod Podge is working with sand and you mix sand with um, paint and Mod Podge. So you can make you can just buy white craft paint and then mix it with Mod Podge and paint it with popsicle sticks even. And it's a lot of fun for kids because then you can also um, put little gemstones or um, pom-poms or things in it okay and your thickness there is varying a little bit uh-huh it can be thin in some areas thick in some are areas we want it to look like you know beach sand like it's on um, part of the the scene here and just a couple other questions while uh -huh. everyone's mm -hmm. uh, using their sand and Mod Podge mixture there can you paint or add other things after it's dry so yes you can. After it is dry, you can. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, I would wait for the Mod Podge to dry completely. You're going to need to let it dry for 24 hours. And once it dries 24 hours, this will be the color of the sand. It won't be white. Right now, see, it's kind of, it's, it has a white tone to it. But it will be clear and look exactly like the sand. And so, no, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And also a reminder of what brush you're using. Oh, I'm using the 12 flat. Or 3 fourths flat. Sorry, not 12. 3 fourths. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add our shells. So I would just take a shell, kind of wiggle it down into the Mod Podge. I'm going to do kind of a, maybe a big one right here. Squish it down into the Mod Podge. And maybe one over here. And maybe some little ones. Okay, and then we're going to go back. Oh, this one's a cool one. Let me see if I put that in there. And we're going to add a little bit. Oh, here's another. I have so many that are really cool. Put that one there. And maybe put this one right there. Okay. So now you can go back after you've placed it if you want to. You don't have to. But I like to make it look like they're in the sand. You know, like they've been washed up into the sand. So I'm just going to tuck a little bit, like over the shell a little bit. Maybe here, put a little bit underneath there. Come up a little bit so it becomes part of the painting and it doesn't look like I just, you know, stuck it on there. So, and I'm going to do that for some of my others. 
Now, again, let this dry 24 hours and it'll dry really hard and it'll seal your shells onto your canvas. So there we go. And even some of these thick spaces, um, places, it'll still dry. So let's show the let's show the finished one right here, and I can show you what I'm talking about. So you can see here how it dried, really thick, and see the shells won't come off; they're stuck on there really well. So that's the look you'll be getting. Okay. Okay. So I think outside of putting our signature on here, which is a little tricky because we have sand. So one of the things you could do, you could put your name up the side if you'd like, or maybe even in the side of the canvas if you would like. Um, but that's it. That's but yeah, it's we're done. Yeah, the, this has got yeah, this has got to dry, of course, for 24 hours. But there you go. That's your beach scene. It's beautiful. Yeah. Suzanne. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Should I enjoy we, doing this. We'll show everyone our next Paint with Plaid night. So everyone's here is the first to see. Our next Paint with Plaid is going to be August 2nd, and it is Peace, Love, and Avocados. So we're not sure if you've seen avocados everywhere. I've seen them everywhere. Very, very trendy and a really, really fun piece here. Again, that's August 2nd. So check out our Facebook event listing to go ahead and RSVP now for that. You'll also find a promo code if you're watching live in that event listing as well. So you can get your squads or full bar at a very fun discount as well. And just in case you didn't know, you can actually replay our past paint with plaid nights. Here are a couple really, really fun paintings that we've done previously. This is Lucky Llama. Suzanne is our teacher there as well. So you know it's going to be a great fun night with her as well as our Luel Pineapple. Several other designs. You can find those on our Facebook page or on our YouTube. Again, follow us at Plaid Crafts on Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget, share paintings with us at hashtag paint with plaid or share them to our Facebook page. We're so excited to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us with Paint with Plaid. Bye.